When the contrarian in me isn't getting at least a little agitated that people keep asking me why I don't play Wordle, I like to answer questions and comments that I get on YouTube, so let's get to it. Off topic, but is the Stramberg shredding quest still underway? Yeah, so I've completed the quest. If you've watched the channel in the last month, uh, Stramberg and Sweetwater sent me this guitar, and the idea was to practice shredding for like one hour a day, which quickly became two hours a day. So today I'm gonna talk about what I learned practicing shredding for one, two hours a day, okay? Uh, first thing I learned is it takes more than 30 days to become a master shredder, but that doesn't mean that I haven't really gained a lot of insight just by kind of like running these exercises. So again, if you watch any of the videos, a lot of what I've been doing is three notes per string stuff. So I'm doing this all in the key of A, and I have some guided lessons and stuff that I did along on the Patreon. If you guys are interested, those are always gonna be up. But basically, if I start on A, I would play the major scale like this, right? So usually I'd play like this, but three notes of string. Just like that, all right? So one thing that I really started out doing was really just kind of practicing my like tremolo. Like that, that kind of like picking style throughout. Uh, the funny thing was that really just kind of felt more like an exercise and it felt more like, all right, like I'm just like working, trying to get this down and steady to a metronome. And I wasn't having like a ton of fun at first, but then I really started open up, up, opening up a lot of different like pathways that I had never ever realized before. So one thing that I think is key when you're practicing stuff like that uh, is to really find a cool spot to maybe do like double hammer-ons, all right? So if we start on the fifth fret of the low, the fifth fret of the low E string, again, this is a seven string, so I'll just pretend there's no B string here, but you end up on the D and the G strings, six, seven, nine, six, seven, nine. Right, and you have your pointer finger, your middle finger, your pinky, your pointer finger, your middle finger, and your pinky, okay? So that was one thing that like, it was kind of fun to do because you can really do double ham rounds where you end up really like flying through it. And it didn't take long for me to get like fast with that, right? Even if it was just like, I pick a string, double ham run, then go to the next one, and then back. Okay, so I'm just going through like a practice amp right now, but usually I would practice with uh, that pedal board that I talked about in another video. I do think that having a good compressor is something that I didn't realize was gonna be so handy, right? Because what having a nice compressor does, again, it, it just evens the sound out. So when you do stuff like that, it just, it just sounds kind of even, right? So the first thing I learned about was really just kind of how important uh, a compressor is to certain different types of sounds. Uh, the next thing that I really liked was finding one position and then sliding into another one. Okay, so again, sticking with this shape, right? Let's go one note beyond on the G string. So if I go six, seven, nine, six, seven, nine, I'm gonna slide to 11, okay? So like if I start here, like that, like that kind of like that kind of thing was something that, it's like, oh, that sounds like pretty cool. And it's conceptually not that difficult to understand, right? And that's when I really made the connection of thinking of the fretboard in just two string courses all the way through. So again, that's something that I've really been hammering home in a lot of different lessons over the last few weeks, whether it's electric guitar or acoustic guitar, kind of seeing that that pattern where it's like, all right, five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine, and then go a half step higher and do the exact same thing, right? So five, seven, nine, five, seven, nine, 10, 12, 14, 10, 12, 14. And then connecting those, oh, screw that up. Connecting them correctly would be the way to do it. But then it's like, all right, well, uh, so inside that shape, I end up here. And it's like, all right, well, there's that pointer middle pinky, pointer middle pinky that I was talking about right here in the, there, which is really just an octave lower. And then you make the connection of, oh, well, this is the same thing as going from here. And then you do that same thing over and over again. So aside from even like shredding, because again, like shredding and like speed metal type stuff isn't really my, my genre that I'm passionate about, but I wanted to kind of understand the insights more. 
that really just opened up my eyes to the entire fretboard just as, as just as a whole just going through double hammer-ons kind of sliding from one shape into another and then just kind of climbing back out of it like that kind of thing where it's maybe just like two frets at a time and you're just moving boxes around that's something that I, I really learned uh, another thing that I learned is it's the cheapest therapy that you will ever, ever, ever get. Uh, again, it started out just being like an hour a day that I was supposed to practice, and I was really, really super diligent about this too. Even if there were a few days where I couldn't do the, the hour straight, but I'd be like, all right, well, I'm, I'm not giving up on this. I'm going to do 30 minutes here, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes here. Like, it's always going to end up to 60 minutes, and then eventually it always added up to like 120 minutes, right? So I felt that the the instant benefit that I got other than just kind of getting a little faster with just you know that kind of tremolo picking was the reach from my pointer finger to my middle finger like this right here the like five seven nine like that reach was difficult for me at first but in in just like a few weeks time I noticed that like that the strength of being able to kind of do that really, really improved uh, pretty quickly, right? Uh, another thing that I noticed is that picks matter. Uh, I started using some of uh, like the more Jazz 3 style harder picks. Uh, and then one of uh, my subscribers who goes by the name of Arkaz sent me some of these picks, which uh, Davidas uses. And I've used these picks before, but never in this context. And again, I consider myself primarily like an acoustic player. And I don't love these super thick picks on acoustic guitar. I like a little bit of flex and give to acoustic playing. But these things came in so clutch. I feel like I'm so much faster playing with these super thick picks. Like they're three millimeter picks, but they're this kind of like really interesting different style uh, texture. Again, that's Davidas' symbol because he has like signature picks on it. I'll link you, this isn't sponsored or anything, but I, I did find that these really helped a lot. And three millimeters seemed like an insane size for me traditionally, but for some for some reason these don't really feel like egregiously thick. Uh, but I definitely am faster and more consistent with these. So uh, good on these picks. They definitely, uh, they definitely helped out. But it's just something that Again, kind of like from like the, the therapy standpoint, there's just something so relaxing that I ended up getting kind of excited about practicing and I'm going to continue on. But I really want to, instead of just focusing on, you know, one thing, I want to just kind of take this methodology and this mindset of sitting down for like an hour, at least an hour every day and just practicing something, whether it's guitar for you, whether, whether it's anything, exercise, something, something productive that is going to add something to your life and kind of just create like like a discipline and just a showing up every day and doing it. That, that has been super, super helpful for me. I think this next month is gonna be maybe kind of doing bluegrass guitar a little bit more because I wanna make some more videos about that because I have some stuff I need to do that is actually uh, correlated to that. But again, super successful uh, experiment. And again, I'm not really like a shred lord, but it is something that I have uh, just developed a new appreciation for. You know, I've always been appreciative of that music even though it's not like a genre that I listen to all the time. A lot of people are like, oh, well, shredding guitar is like just soulless. And, and one thing that, and I, I just didn't know either way if that was true or not. Like, I definitely think there's like a lot of soulless shredding going on in the world for sure. But just kind of having talks with my buddy Davidas, who's like an, an elite level player like that. There really is a creativity that goes into it, aside from just running shapes up and down. It's just kind of like how you apply certain things and how you kind of like train the muscle memory in your hands to be able to react a little bit quicker. So I've just, I've just noticed that for myself, I can react to melodic content a little faster than before. Not like something like crazy faster, but uh, I, I do think that you can still be melodic and still do those things to make it sound, you know, like less, like more than just lifeless shredding. So again, if you have any more questions or comments, uh, definitely let me know, but I am gonna continue the quest. The quest will never end, as it shouldn't for anybody who's kind of like has ambitions of just really playing an instrument. Like you never, you're never done learning. So again, it's been a, it's been a fun time and I'm glad that you guys decided to join me for part of it. Steve Stein explains this much better. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he does, but, uh, Sorry, you clicked here, so that's what you got.
Hello there, what cables do you use for mic and what cables for the guitar? Thank you. So for cables, I'm pretty exclusively on Hosa cables. Uh, I've been using those for a couple years now. I've never ever had one go bad. I just have abused them live and uh, Hosa cables are basically what I use for pretty much everything now. Great insight, but I just have to say this. While watching this, my better half thought I was watching Steve Martin. Now I can't unhear it in Sean's voice. It's like he's a younger Steve Martin, even the quirky interjections. I hope you take this as a compliment. He's very talented. You know what's funny? I get this a lot, actually, that I'm reminding people of a young Steve Martin, and they almost always say, I hope you take this as a compliment. As if I would take it as anything but a compliment that I'm being compared to like an absolute legend of entertainment. So please let the, uh, let the Steve Martin comparisons come and hopefully we can get some of these Hallmark directors on board and I can fulfill that dream too. When you record your rhythm guitar for a song, do you record the whole thing or do you record a verse and chorus and then loop it? I always play the whole thing, but when it's a long song, my rhythm clarity sometimes drops off. Any tips? Great question. I always try to record the entire song all the way through, and then if there is some kind of rhythmic clarity that's wrong, maybe I'll just take a loop from that part, if it's a really good performance, right? The funny thing is, like, sometimes I've found the first time I play something is the performance that has the most life, but there also might be some kind of, like, I don't want to say mistakes, but some things that aren't maybe as tight as you want to record a performance to be. So, if I can't recreate uh, the excitement of the original performance, maybe then I'll take like part of one, like a little piece of loop of one thing and then crossfade it into another thing. I actually have a video coming up on just recording acoustic guitars in the next couple days, so definitely stay tuned for that because I definitely think, I think I'm really getting a good acoustic guitar sound for some of the newer recordings, so uh, definitely stay tuned for that. I'm sure you know this, but the fact that people complain about your lip smacking, arrogance, or other things is just a reflection of how jealous they are. That's really no different than high school girls, always jealous of the hot girl. You're probably the hot girl to them, only male, but with lots of subs and money? <laughs> Smack away, Sean. Be your weird, thanks for the teaching. Any comment that compares me to the hot girl in high school, I am all for. Not sure if I have as much money as subs at this point, but you know what? We're still we're still rocking that upward trajectory, so keep it coming. This vid is looking like an Abercrombie and Fitch model and a romance novel cover model got together to teach me how to shred, and I appreciate that. So this has been on Davidas' new clean shaven look, which makes him look exactly like Fabio. So definitely go over to his channel and just give him more Fabio comments because I think he kind of understands it but also doesn't like it. So we're just promoting that as much as we possibly can. Stop saying guy or girl. It sounds so corny. Everybody understands a guy means both sexes. Do people understand that guy always means both sexes? I'm not totally sure about that. Like if I were to go home to my parents and be like, you know, I just met this guy and I think I'm gonna marry this guy. I think they might actually think I was talking about a man. But I, I get the spirit of this comment. <laughs> In the spirit of uh, hating on inclusivity. <laughs> like if I'm like, all right, see you guys later. Maybe I'm talking to a collective group of guys but the guy singular, I think still is, I don't know, that's all I'm gonna say on that. <laughs> For listening homework, I'm going to throw you to a new song by one of my favorite art rock artists, Kate LeBon. Uh, she has an album and a song called Pompeii, which I'm not even jealous about because me and Andrea also have a song about Pompeii that is more about the literal destruction of Pompeii. So I'm gonna link both of those in listening homework and you tell me which one you like better. So uh, definitely, once again, thank you to Sweetwater and Strandberg for sending this guitar over. Uh, thanks for kind of sticking with me on this shred quest. And if you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, or the website. I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.